Hello and welcome to a very much delayed Ancient Minecrafter video. Um, in a minute I'll go into all the technical details about why it's taken me six or seven months to get one out. Here I am at the West House, I'm at the very western edge of Durrington Walls. Durrington Walls was the village, town, probably a settlement of several hundred houses that uh, was built at the same time as the main phase of Stonehenge was built. It's Almost certainly, nothing's actually definite, that this is where the builders of Stonehenge lived. What is known is that, uh, especially at the winter solstice, large numbers of people arrived from all over the country and lived here and ate and brought cattle with them and had huge barbecues. So I've tried to make it, rather than just being a collection of houses, I've tried to give us, you know, traditional Minecraft farms. If you look over here, here's like a meeting area, which... If you look, everything's a little bit slow because I've switched on all the shaders. We've got shadows, we've got fluffy bits, we've got waving grass. So I've got a new graphics card, so, you know, we might as well use it. So, like, you know, there's benches here, there's banks of seats, there's big open-air barbecues, there's bonfires. Um, yeah, one of the reasons why it's taken me so long is because I installed a solid-state hard disk. And in some ways it was bad because I had to completely uninstall windows and reinstall a fresh copy which meant of course reinstalling forge and then linking forge and light loader and then getting all my mods to work including the ones that i wrote and while i was at it i added a couple of new ones like these fabulous micro blocks if you look i've got a hacksaw and i can cut oak blocks down and make them into thin ones so that so as i said what i really wanted to do was make it not just a collection of houses, but somewhere where people were living. So we've got like this little kind of like work sheds that's stuffed full of um, hay to keep the rain off, for example. Now, if we look at the map, you can see I've got farms. If I go down here, you can see I've got some pens where um, people would have kept. Actually, if I head about over this way, we've got some pens where people would have kept their animals. Um, I did have a really weird thing where I booted up a version of Minecraft as I was doing all the mods and the installs, which didn't have all the mods installed. And I thought it would just say, oh yeah, we found some weird blocks that we don't know what to do with, so we'll save you a copy, which is what it usually does. And then, you know, you can have a look and see how it's going. But instead, yeah, look, here's a... Here's a, um, an enclosure full of cattle. People bought their cattle, actually. It was like bring your own cow barbecue and they came from all over the country for the winter solstice at Durrington Mall so it really was quite a big thing. Um, yeah so I kind of fired it up without the right mods and I've learned a lot about how Minecraft works because each block has got a number and there's a set of spare numbers at the end if you want for your custom blocks. Here's one of my cows, it's an Orox. Is that an Orox? Has it got a white stripe down it? Yep that's an Orox. Primitive cow. Um, and it turned all my chalk blocks, of which there are thousands all over this world. Just looking at the map, so I seem to have got a bit lost here. It turned all my chalk blocks into avocado saplings, of all things, because I'm running Pam's Harvest Craft on top of everything else. Now, of course, the problem with saplings is they grow. So I couldn't just go through and change them all to chalk with a block change, because by the time I'd figured out how to do that, half of them had... Pigs? Half of them had changed themselves into... Um, trees and they all had different block numbers so I spent quite a lot of time kind of manually putting things back together and some of them were like kind of holder blocks that didn't have the proper number so it was all a bit of a nightmare. However I do have some good news. What's gone wrong there? That looks a bit horrible doesn't it? Oh every time I do that I've been playing on the Xbox too much. Oh yeah right let's just fix this while we're talking. And it being the end of July, I finally bit the bullet last night and I went up to Windows 10. And I was thinking, oh god, Windows 10, all my mods, I'm going to have to reinstall the mods, reinstall Light Loader, Forge, the whole lot. I kind of mentally, I thought, well, it'll be a couple of days and I'll get back to it. And I was really chuffed. I went in directly after the install, went straight into Minecraft, and everything was there. As you've seen, we've got Orox, we've got Blocks, we've got... I'm now looking at the map because I'm wandering about and talking and I'm completely lost. So, 
I will hold my hand up. I can be a bit of a conspiracy theorist. I don't really like big corporations. I was nervous when Microsoft took over Minecraft, obviously. But Windows 10 is brilliant at the moment. It Again, because we've got the solid state hard disk, once we had the 3 gig download done, it installed really quickly and seamlessly. And so far, so good. You can also hear, I really apologise, I have got a bit of a cold. Which does generally put me off from making videos. But as it has been nearly seven months, I thought I'd better get one out now. Just to let you know I'm still here, still being ancient. If I look at the map, you can see what I've done is I've made a basic kind of cross shape of houses. And I'm then going to fill in the corners. I'll do that. I'll spend a couple of hours over the weekend and do that. Oh, now did you hear those doors? Yeah, they're going a bit mad, really. I've got some villagers. And what I'm hoping is, because I've got way more houses than villagers, I'm hoping that they will gradually spread and actually take over the whole village. Ah, oh, which will be lovely. It will kind of make it feel like a real village. Here's a half-sunk house. And there's one that I missed. Look at that. Avocado sapling. So we'll get rid of that. That's better. So yeah, a lot of the mods kind of didn't play with each other nicely. I'm kind of lucky that didn't grow into an avocado tree right in the middle of everything. Um, yeah, and as well as that, I'm trying to kind of put like farms, totem poles, odd, sto odd um, wooden circles, all sorts of things around and about the village because if you look at the research they've actually only excavated a small amount of it so I'm kind of taking what they've found and kind of covering the rest of the area with it and rather strangely and a bit dispiritingly when I've done it all I'm gonna to have to take a copy and save it and then more or less I'm gonna to have to kind of demolish it and start again because it only lasted a few hundred years during to balls if that oh it's a roundhouse I've forgotten I've done one of them has it got a fire or a tree? Neither. Have a campfire. There you go. Um, yeah, it only lasted a, maybe 150, couple of hundred years. And a lot of it was knocked down to build these just ridiculous ditches and banks around it that still survive today. Oh yeah, look, that's where World Painter wrote Durrington Walls. I'll have to get rid of that as well. Anyway, let's go over here. Here is the big concrete, concrete, gravel pathway that leads up to Budhenge and there's a villager looking probably rather confused by it all which is understandable ah. Ah. I'm just going to go and have a quick look at the river I won't talk for too long because I have got a cold and I really want to get this video uploaded um, and there's all the shaders and the reflections and the render distances and I spent a lot of money on a graphics card and I'm very chuffed with it. The other thing I will show you just before I go is we'll pop over to Stonehenge which I have restored already. Now where is it? It's up that hill there. Yeah, and the waypoint's never quite in the right place. This is the heel stone and the stone that was next to the heel stone before it fell over and the avenue. Oh, again, you see, I'm going to have to put the avenue in, and that's like, on the ground, it's like a couple of miles of ditch and banks. That's going to be a lot of work. But I have, as much as I can, filled in. And you see, if we look at the map, you can see a beautiful circle there. It's all chalk and chalk grass. And this is the main entrance with the heel stone, where if you were there at the summer solstice, you would have seen the sun rise over the heel stone. These are the Aubrey holes. Again, there was still a lot of debate about these holes. They might have had stones in. They might have had wooden posts in. For the moment, I've left them as totem poles because it looks kind of sweet. There is even a theory they were left as holes. And apparently if you move, if you put coloured rocks in them and move them around, you can predict eclipses and do all sorts of clever stuff with the sun and the moon. The bottom line is, as with a lot of this prehistory stuff, nobody really knows. But... It's just lovely to be able to actually walk around and go, this is the earliest phase of Stonehenge. This is what it would actually look like, especially now we've got, as I say, the shadows. And, you know, the waving grass and everything and the sunset. And here's the post for the centre. So this is like, this is what it would have been like to be in the centre of Stonehenge. 
you know, 4,000 years ago. And that's really quite lovely, and that's really what I wanted when I started this series. So, as the sun sets, I'm going to leave you there looking at a lovely sunset. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. Please do leave me comments, let me know how you're going. Thank you for sticking with it if you've been waiting seven months for the next video to come out. I promise I will try harder. With a bit of luck, I'll get another one out. Let's say before the end of the year, though, hopefully a lot quicker than that. As always, click on like, subscribe, tell... Obviously, you've all got dozens of friends who love both Minecraft and prehistory. Tell all your friends, click on like, subscribe, leave me comments. It's quite lonely sat here on my own just chatting away to Minecraft. Oh, look at that. The moon coming up and casting shadows. You know, that is really quite lovely. Um, yeah, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Um, I am the Ancient Minecrafter. Thank you for listening and goodbye.